storyteller because he's going to talk about his complicated relationships with cats. Give it up for Chibi! Hi, hello. Um, as uh, explained, I, I was going to tell a story, but I thought it's better to um, explain about my complicated relationship with cats. <laughs> and at the heart of this, this complication is uh, quality hair products or lack of. So now I understand it because you're sitting there, I can see some of your faces saying, what do quality hair products have to do with complicated cat situation, right? I can explain everything. It, it all began really back in the day. I mean, some of you, I think, maybe some of your parents were even virgins then. At that moment, I, I mean, it's okay, don't feel sad, but it's just historical <laughs> fact. Um, something happened when I was 20, and that started my complicated life with cats. And this incident that happened when I was 20, it happened because there was an event that took place when I was 19. And the event that took place when I was 19 was sort of set in motion when I was 18. <laughs> and, and what it was, it was the sort of near death of my grandmom. Now, what happened, uh, we got a call that grandmom's dying. She's almost dying. So everybody had to sort of get in the car. We went down to the village. I'm talking, of, I was living in Nigeria at the time. So we go down to the village and everyone in a panic. When we get to the compound, we see grandmom sitting down reading Karl Marx. So she's, she wasn't dead. The, but the doctor said, yeah, but I thought she was going to die. That's why the message came. And so we stay around for three days or so. She seems fit as a fiddle. We go back. Three weeks later, oh, grandma's almost dead. Grandma's almost dead. And this went on for about a year and a half, you know? And it put a lot of strain on the parents because uh, Nigeria is a very big country. And we're talking big distances. You, drive down, you come back, and she was always reading these books, you know, when we found, uh, when we got there. Um, so this went on and on and on, and uh, in uh, the summer of my 19th year, I was sort of sent to the village, I had to stay there. And the reason was because my results in first year uni, you know, <laughs> there were numbers, right, but they weren't sort of, yeah, so I had to go to the village. And um, another person who was banned to the village was my cousin, Jehoshaphat. We call him Fats. Jehoshaphat, he was sent to the village because he was causing trouble. And what happens in Nigeria quite often, uh, the village is like where your father's father's father uh, comes from. So you don't necessarily live there. They're mainly old people. And when you sort of mess around, you're sent there to sort of calm down. Because there's this weird thing. You shouldn't underestimate old people. You know, you see old people, you think, oh, they're really slow. But they're very tricky, because if you're planning, you're planning some move, like in the village, you're just as you're planning some move, you'll suddenly hear somebody say, excuse me, and you'll just see this person there. They always got in the way, and it was very stressful. And um, another thing that was stressful was the fact that we, ha we have to go and visit my grandmother every day, and then in the evening we'd phone and report how things were. Now, I have to sort of, you probably want to know where the quality hair product part comes in. So this is, this is the part. Then, um, I'm sure if you look at me, it's possible you notice I don't have much hair. I'm not sure about it. It's okay, you can giggle or whatever. Uh, you, I don't have much hair. Now, most people, some people also don't have much hair, and their hair kind of went slowly. But mine didn't go slowly, it just went like that. <laughs> and... Um, but back then, I'm there, so you think of me 19 in the summer. I'm in the village, and I had uh, afros were kind of in, in, in mode, right? But I, I liked sort of, you know, going further. So I didn't actually have an afro. And if you have black hair, you can do amazing things. So I had a sort of inverse pyramid on my head, right? <laughs> and with the, you know, it was, and I'd sort of be walking, people would say, pyramid, pyramid. I'd say, hey. Like that. And I was, so I was really amazing. And, um, and my cousin Fats, he had a sort of mini afro. And the thing is that getting this pyramid right was really, it took a long time, it was very expensive. So that meant I didn't have money for quality hair products. Whereas my cousin Fats, with his little afro, very easy to do. So he had lots of money for quality hair products, but he wouldn't share these things. Anyway, so the deal was we're in the village and we had to see my grandmother. Both of us had to see her two hours a day. And then we soon figured out that if we went together, 
then the two hours, you know, so his two hours and my two hours were like together. And also that was really good because my grandmother, after one minute, one hour and 55 minutes, we'd really get on her nerves and she'd ask, her, ask us to go. So this was our sort of routine. Every day we'd sort of go see grandma and then we'd phone back, yeah, she's okay, reading this book, da da da. And then um, on the night before the incident, it was really different because she, she was really bubbly and we were eating and she was telling these stories of when she was a kid. And she'd never told us these stories before. And so we'd hear about all these things she did that usually guys did, but she was doing them. And she said that whenever people said, oh, you shouldn't do that, you have to be a lady, she'd say, well, if I can do it, I will. And her dad, that's my great granddad, he was kind of very lazy. He didn't like hassle. So he just said, yeah, if she can do it, she will. And that was, that's the kind of grandmother she was. So everything was wonderful. We, we hear these stories. We love her much, much more than usual. Then the next day we go there, um, we expect to see her bouncing around. She's not. She's lying in the bed. And so we go into the room. And it's really weird because the way she's breathing is it's sort of it's heavy and very slow. And I'm looking at uh, my cousin. He's, we, we don't know. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I, 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 I've never seen somebody. I wasn't sure she was, she was going to die, but I'd never seen anyone die before. So we're sort of saying, Grandma, can you hear us? Can you hear us? And she says, uh, she sort of makes a little noise and moves her hand. And then suddenly her hand goes up in the air and she says, Life is beautiful. And then the hand comes down and this, this, this breath just comes out, comes out of her. And then this, this other wind also came out of uh, the other end. <laughs> and and um, it's odd. I, at that moment, I thought maybe she'd been saving gas up all her life for this, this final, I don't know, uh, emission, you know, this grand emission. <laughs> and uh, I looked to my cousin, and, and he looks at me. I said, we're against the ceiling, aren't we? And it's true. We, we were up against the ceiling. Such was the force of this this retirement wind, that we're up against the ceiling. And he says, why is your hair running away? And this is, this, is, this is where the quality hair product comes in. You see, he used quality hair products. I didn't. So I looked, and believe it or not, my pyramid afro, I saw it running down the wall, scampering across, across the bedroom, and disappearing outside. So just like that, I was bald. I had no hair. I hadn't, it, I hadn't eased into being bald. It was just gone. And I was really conflicted at that moment because did I chase my hair? Or do I pay respect to my just dead grandmother? You know, it's a, a tight. But I stayed. I stayed. And so, so I began life as a bald human being, 19 years old. And, and it was rough. You know, I tried things. I tried paint, you know, like this. But it's, it's really messy. Paint. Tried straw. Straw, it doesn't do it, you know? And I, I even sort of tried the comb over. But you see, this is, um, if you have black hair, your hair doesn't kind of, it, it doesn't like being combed over. Because if you put it like that over here, then it will just go back again. And even if you sort of tie it with rope and all that stuff, it would, after two days, it just goes back, you know? So I was sad and I was desperate. And then something happened uh, after about a year of being bold. You know, I, I was in pain, uh, in anguish. What happened was uh, I was at a friend's house and I saw a cat, black cat. And I suddenly, I don't know why. I remember I was young, I was desperate. I saw this cat and I thought, hey, I got a plan, right? <laughs> now, I have to explain a couple of things. First of all, I didn't know the cat didn't like being tied to someone's head, okay? <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know this. It didn't have a label on it or anything like that. <laughs> And I didn't know it would be so scratchy. It was horrible. It was just scratching away. So after about three hours, I had to give up this thing. <laughs> you know, but that's when my problem started, because the cat came off. And the cat said, you're a cat molester. And then that cat told all the other cats. And I mean, this went well around the world. Uh, this is not a joke. I'm serious. As you see me here, this is real. <laughs> this went around the world. I had this thing with cats, a complicated situation with cats. And I'm thinking, how do you do something about that? And I heard from somebody that in the United Nations, they have a special cases department. You think this is a joke, it's not a joke. They have a special cases department, or you have to call United Nations if you like tomorrow, call them, say, I want special cases. There'll be a pause. Then somebody will say, what is your special case? And if your case is special enough, they'll help you out. So I said, look, I've got this thing with cats. They don't like me. They think I'm a molester. I, I, was, I just put it on my head. And, 
And so we got a negotiator, somebody to try and mediate. We had conferences. And it's amazing. So it's like I would be here with my legal team, the cats would be there, and we'd be negotiating about things, da, 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 you know, trying to get down to a normal situation with the cats. So finally in January, after years, after years and years, I've had children in the meantime, they've grown up, after all these years, we finally got a neutral situation. And it was like, I had a neutral relationship with cats until last Wednesday. <laughs> last Wednesday, the sun was out, so it was kind of low and bright. So I'm cycling away in Amsterdam Sound. I'm going this way, that way, this way. And then I look, and on the road, I see a dead cat. Like, there's this cat just lying like that. So I thought, oh, the cat's dead. And then I thought, okay, well, since he's dead, and I, I don't want to wear out my tires, I'll cycle, oh, you know, oh. I, it was dead. I didn't know. It, it wouldn't know. I didn't know. It, it wasn't alive. You can't, it's already dead. I couldn't kill it again. You're looking at me in a funny way, but I'm actually a nice person. Um, usually. So... I was gonna go over the cat, but it, it turned out it was alive. And at the last moment, it sort of ran off, and I just got the tail, little ding, ding. Yeah, it was bad. The cat was screaming. It was rolling around on the ground. Meow, 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 meow. You know, you know. I don't know if you like if you watch football, but apparently, if Italian players, if you sort of touch them, they, the, the cat was just rolling, just rolling. And then other cats came. What, what's going on, what's going on? It's him, he did it. And they're pointing at me. He tried to murder a dead cat. And that is, that's where I am right now. So I just want to say, I'm sure some of you have friends with cats. Some of you might have cats, okay? Help me out here. What happens, you've seen me here, you know I'm a nice person. Tell them, when you go home, find these cats, talk to them. Tell them that she, he's okay. It was an accident. He didn't want to hurt the cats. I didn't want to embarrass cats. I like cats. Cats are cool. So just do that for me. I'll be so grateful. Thank you very much.